The FSU spring game is right around the corner, and the guys at the Triple Option myself thought it'd be a good idea to outline some of the things that we're looking for in this spring game. But first, I think it's good to talk about some of the things that a spring game isn't good for. It's not good to assess the overall quality of a team or a player, because it's just too small of a sample size to make that big of a judgment. Plus, any good play for the offense is inherently a bad play for the defense. But what it does do well is it allows us to see transfers and freshmen in their first real action against Power 5 D1 opponents. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the film. It might be the quarterback in me, but when I first watch a football play, my eyes go towards the secondary. How many safeties are there? What kind of coverage does it look like they're playing? In the spring game, this will give you a good opportunity to go through some of the coverages that I've talked about before on this channel. But Florida State's going to like to stay in two high looks. And that's because defensive coordinator Adam Fuller likes to base out of cover four. You'll also see them roll one of these safeties down and play a fair amount of man free. That's because man coverage is one of those basics that you need to get down before you move on to more complicated coverages. But both of these coverage schemes, cover four and man free, do something in particular that's really nice for the spring game. They put these corners on islands and make them take any man deep. This gives us a great opportunity to see two of FSU's most highly rated recruits from last year in action early. In particular, Azariah Thomas is getting a lot of attention because of his length and athleticism. However, that length means that he's a little bit slow off the line. So it'll be interesting to see how he can handle quicker receivers at the D1 level early in his career. Another potential question I have for the secondary is who fills Jarvis Brownlee's shoes as the experienced corner on this team? It's looking early like Renardo Green might be the answer, however he is transitioning back from playing safety, which is an entirely different role. So it'll be interesting if he can regain the skills and athleticism you need to be a corner. A lot of the focus and coverage goes on these corners and safeties, but in reality, they can't get their jobs done if they can't trust the guys underneath them in coverage. And that's been a big problem for FSU in recent past. This started to change as the year progressed and Kalen DeLoach got a little bit of footing, but overall, the linebacker room hasn't had enough speed and agility to really get out and make life easier on the safeties and corners. This past off season, FSU bolstered the linebacker room with Bethune Tatum from UCF. It'll be interesting to see if he can continue to take up the torch that Kalen Deloach started and really improve this linebacker core's abilities and coverage. Another group that might allow the linebackers to spend less time in run fits and more time in coverage is the defensive line room. And it looks like FSU is going to have another good one this season. However, there's still some lingering questions about the defensive end group. Jared Verse was a transfer brought in to replace some of the production lost by Donson. He has all the athletic potential in the world but he's still raw in a lot of his fundamentals. So it'd be interesting to see how he compares against power five tackles in the spring game. Facing off against the defensive line is the offensive line, and a lot of the big questions have revolved around the tackle position. Specifically, the transfer Bless Harris, and whether or not he's ready to step up and take significant reps this year. He has plus athleticism and footwork and seems to have a good feel for the game early, but he is missing a bit of the size and strength that you typically want in a tackle. The other transfer offensive lineman, Caden Lyles, kind of has the opposite problem. He has the size and strength, but his speed is somewhat lacking and he's still struggling to pick up some of the game as the center's a really complicated position. Moving out to the tight end position opens up even more questions. Cam McDonald seems to be the clear number one in that room. However, Norvell likes to use multiple tight ends. So who's going to step up after him? Is the young Jackson West ready to step up and get big time minutes? Or are we still going to see a healthy rotation of Preston Daniel and Wyatt Rector, two kind of more known entities? Another guy that may potentially get some reps at tight end is six foot seven transfer Johnny Wilson Jr. from Arizona State. In his previous stop, he should be one of the better blockers at the wide receiver position and you could theoretically see him being moved all around the field to create mismatches anywhere he goes. I think on offense, that's gonna be the biggest storyline for me. How can they use this really unique player to fit in and mold with Norvell's scheme? I have a feeling a lot of how we'll see him used is in this little flex position that's not truly a wide receiver, but not truly a tight end. So he has the space to release openly out into the field, but he also can make an impact blocking in the box. 
there's still a lot of questions that need to be answered in the wide receiver room. Malik McLean came along a lot as the season went on last year, but is he ready to be your number one on the outside? It'll be interesting to see how transfer wide receiver Micah Pittman slots in as well. He's a very similar build to Dakai Douglas, but I think he offers a very different skill set. I think he could be a consistent presence in the wide receiver room that you haven't had in a while. So the interesting test will be to see if he can make those tough catches over the middle of the field consistently throughout the spring game. Moving on to the running back room, I think the biggest question is transfer running back Trey Benson. He had a pretty significant leg injury and didn't show much production even before that. However, he has speed and athleticism that could be a real plus in Norvell's system. It'll be interesting to see if he can read the field well and make decisive cuts like Norvell typically teaches in his running backs. I also think it's worth a second to talk about Lawrence Tofili. He got a lot of reps his freshman year, but kind of fell off the cliff sophomore year. I think a lot of that has to do with decisiveness and his ability to read the field. It'll be interesting if he can break off some runs in the spring game and really show that he's ready to step up and move on from his sophomore slump. And now we can move on to the big position, everybody's favorite, quarterback. Jordan Travis is the starter. There's no question about it. But can he progress as a passer to be a really dominant quarterback at the college level? Particularly, what I'm going to be looking for is his ability to make throws over the middle and throw the ball before his wide receivers get open. I call this anticipation, and it's one of the most important skills for a quarterback to have. Behind him, there's also a big question at who his number two is going to be. Tate Rotomaker's been here a few years and has the tools and arm strength but he makes some really baffling decisions, and it's hard to know if he's really ready to step up and have any significant snaps this year. Behind him is four-star quarterback AJ Duffy, who has all the tools, but is still young, and it'll be interesting to see how he progresses and how quickly he can read the field in this spring game. Specifically, I wanna be able to see if he's making multiple reads in one play, going from one receiver to the next to the next and making a decision before he gets sacked. Traditionally, Freshman quarterbacks have trouble doing this and they're slow with their reads. And that just about does it. This spring game should be exciting and it always proves to be a fun time. Let me know what you're looking for in the spring game in the comments below and thanks for watching.